Oh no, I was sitting there going, I hope I don't come after the charismatic marketing guy. Oh yeah, jeez. So uh, let's see, who am I? So I'm Jonathan Keebler, I'm uh, the technical founder of a company called Scribble Live. Anyone that doesn't know Scribble Live, we're a live publishing platform based here in Toronto. Uh, whoop, slides are a little weird, but. Um, so we're homegrown here. Um, I wrote all the original code in it. Um, today we have about 100 employees in offices around the world. Um, we've raised about $28 million in three rounds and we've done three acquisitions. So that's kind of where we are today. So today I'm gonna tell you four things that I learned going through it, jump ahead there. And uh, you know, take my advice, don't take my advice, but they're things that you probably need to hear and I end up saying to a lot of people at these sort of meetups. First one is you won't see a paycheck for the first two years. Everyone comes up to me and says like, my product is amazing. I'm gonna launch it, people are gonna be giving me money, it's gonna be really easy. You know, that's how I'm gonna support myself. I'm here to tell you it's not gonna happen. For two years, even if you get money, even if you get seed, you're gonna be injecting that money back into the company. You're gonna be, you know, trying to keep things like margins healthy, so it's just not gonna happen. So when I look back over uh, the first four years, you know, my, my co-founder and I, Michael, were, we were injecting um, our own money into the company. We hired our first employee on our lines of credit. And, you know, it's just the reality that you're probably better working at McDonald's for four years than starting a company, but believe me or not. Um, second thing I'll say is get users as soon as possible. Like having real people using your software is fantastic because they see things totally different than your mom or your friends or anyone else. And then once you get them, listen to them. Like if you, if your first users are not your friends, if they don't know you by name and you go and have drinks with them and stuff, you're doing it wrong because those are the people that are, they're putting their money in harm's way, they're investing in your product, and they have all these crazy ideas. Like our first customer was Dale Fallon at the Score Sports Station, you know, this impressive guy. But really it was Dale Fallon, my former boss, who we built everything he asked for. We took him out for beers all the time. That's who he was. And getting that feedback from that first user, the first few users, is so important. And because you can put it back in your product and rev really quick. Next bit is about VCs. So, you know, everyone when they're starting a company these days, they sort of say like, oh, I don't need venture capital. I'm gonna, you know, I'll be making so much money, I won't need them. Eventually you're gonna want them because you're, you're gonna wanna do something crazy or big or some massive idea that you're gonna need the capital for. And venture capitals, capitalists are not evil by any means, but there's one thing they wanna do. They wanna invest in a proven model and they want their money to be like gas on a fire and just invest in that model, blow it up to a thousand, launch the rocket ship, whatever analogy you wanna do, that's what they wanna hear. So you can't go in there pitching them a dream. So I remember like our first pitch for Scribble Live was basically, you know, give us some money, we'll build more features and then we'll get more customers. And they were like, ah, well, I, I don't know, I guess I have to go on faith whether that's gonna work or not. Whereas, you know, once we've done about our millionth pitch and we got down to, you know, we have a model that's working in media. Uh, we think it can be applied to corporate as well. If you invest your money, this is how we're gonna apply it. That's sort of more what venture capitalists wanna hear. And the moment you can get your pitch down to that, you know, you'll talk to 10 of them and two of them will be interested and away you go. So VC's really, really helpful, but you need to know how to talk to them. The other last thing, never compromise on company culture. Um, you know, there's a lot of times where, especially when you're starting out, you're, you sort of meet someone and you're like, you know, he's almost the person I want. He, you know, I, maybe, maybe he'll turn around. I sort of, you know, he didn't get a good feeling about him, but you know, he seems like an all right guy. It doesn't work out. And then, then you end up wasting all this time training them and then you got to fret about like, oh, I don't want to fire this guy. He has kids and it's all, like, don't let them in there. You know, your culture is so important because uh, the best analogy I ever heard is being in a company is like being in a canoe and you have to all be stroking in the same direction. And you know, sometimes you get those people that are stroking in the opposite direction and you're like, okay, well obviously we can't have this guy in the canoe and you have to get rid of him. But you know, the worst are sometimes you get those people that are like secretly drilling a hole in the canoe and your canoe is sort of <laughs> filling with water and you're like, I don't know where the water's coming from, but you know, the, the best employees that I've ever hired, um, you know, during the interview process, everyone was like, yeah, this, this person's the right fit. And then their first day at work, everyone was like, great, I'm glad we hired them. It, for the people that we let go eventually, there's always some red flag that we should not hire them. So that's important. That's it. Thank you very much. So, thanks. We got some time for questions. Who has questions? Yeah.
So the question is, do we hire on a gut feel or do we have a system? So I think um, it, it's a little column A, a little column B. Um, you definitely have to put them through the technical people. Um, so you know, get for hiring developers, for example, get other developers in there to actually see if they have the chops. Uh, but then also, I think you have to talk to them, you know, see what their goals are, that thing, that sort of thing. And a lot of times, I'll find like the technical people like them, but the culture isn't quite there, or vice versa. Like I said, those are the times where you get into trouble and you end up hiring someone that doesn't quite work out. So I think you really have to go for both culture and the technical jobs. Yeah. So uh, the question is, how many users to statistical? How many? What's a statistical viable number of users to get some honest feedback? Um, I think you can only get what you can get, right? If you have one, listen to that user. You know, try to get two. Uh, we found it was more like uh, you'd take one and you'd sort of use that one to get someone else because they'd teach you a lesson. Like, oh, you need, uh, you know, commenting. I remember uh, that first user of ours said, "You got to have commenting," and we were like. Wow, that's amazing because it's on a roadmap for this month, and we went home and like programmed it in the afternoon, and like, oh, here it is, it's amazing. So, you know, I think you can really learn a lot from one, but definitely the more you have, the better it gets, and then hopefully you get into a problem where you, there's so many of them that you can't give them the attention that they deserve, and you have to h start hiring people. But, like I said, it, it doesn't take that long to send people emails and just sort of stay connected to who, those users and make sure that they're doing well and they like the product and everything. Yeah. So <laughs> the question, do, do you incentivize employees when you're starting up? Um, we didn't, because I think, you know, it's, if you say, okay, come in here, we'll give you all this stock, and, and you know, that, that'll really motivate them. I don't think that's what motivates people to, to do their best work. And I guess I'm talking about technical people. I think people love challenges. They love, um, you know, really buying into an idea. And that, once again, I'm sort of getting back to culture. And those are the sort of people that I like working with. And obviously, you know, I believe in paying a, a good wage. Like, I, I never say work for free and just give, you know, stock. I always remember that Simpsons episode where they had the toilet paper stock thing. You guys, and they just said, ah, how much stock do you need? And they're just pulling it off the toilet paper thing. Um, so I, I, I would never do something like that. I'd say make sure it's someone, you give them a good wage. That's what you owe them as an employer. But then make sure that they're people that are actually buying into what you want. And you're... I don't think you can buy allegiance, really. All right. Thanks a lot.